So we have three uh, presenters who are going to show off uh, apps that they've already made using the data that Elliot just talked about. Um, let's go with Biddy first. So Biddy, so this is David Altenberg. Um, it's online right now. Hey, it's up. Okay. I don't know if the graphs will. Don't please don't all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell us what Biddy does. Okay. So I am one of those people who have been grabbing the um, doc and bike availability data every minute, and I've got this all in a Postgres database. And this Biddy, which I need to change the name because there's apparently a some video sharing web app or site that uses that. So I'm open for suggestions. I really like that. Name. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so I've been grabbing that data um, every minute. Um, this page, when you load the web app, shows uh, the most recently added stations. The last station was added, like Sean said, in October 29. Um, and yeah, this was this was actually really fun to watch uh, in the last days of October when they were adding the box stations. Um, if you go, there's also a list. Of this one. Uh, yeah, we'll see if it loads. Um, hopefully, it will load. I'll talk while we're waiting for it. Um, so right now, it's, it's 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 trying to load three graphs, and the reason why it's so slow is because I don't have any data that's cached. So it's lo looking at the last 30 days of data. Hey, and I loaded. Um, and uh, kind of visualizations of that. Uh, I think this top one is the most interesting. These are just weekdays, but it shows the percentiles of uh, how bikes are available. And I actually created this because I have a coworker who started commuting by Disney, and he was frustrated with finding the docks that are empty and he wanted to figure out how early he would have to get up to make sure he'd be able to get a bike. Uh, so this darker line in the middle shows the median number of bikes that are available at various times of day. Uh, the format is not great, but it starts out in the night and goes until the next minute. So um, <coughs> this is at Lincoln and Fullerton, so it's, in, so it's a residential one. So. Um, I'm actually a little surprised at this, because normally what you expect to see is uh, a lot more dips, like around rush hours. People are picking up bikes uh, in order to commute to work, and that's seen a whole lot with that. Uh, but as you can see, like the median number of bikes changes. It tags a little in the morning, uh, presumably because of commuters, and it goes up a little in the evening. And then the lighter shaded areas are various percentiles. I think it goes to 75th percentile, 85th, and then 90th. So you can get an idea um, not only of how many bikes are available, but how much does that vary day to day. Okay, so is this for all time since it was started? Uh, this is just 30 days of data, which that's like 40,000 data points, give or take. The reason why it's so slow is because it's pulling back 40,000 rows from the database. Um, I'm working on caching that uh, as we speak. <laughs> Uh, the next two charts are much simpler. They're just um, plots of the, the uh, availability over time. Um, these are really interesting to watch as the new stations spin up because you can start to see, like, oh, they filled up a dock with uh, some bikes, and here's the first person who checked out a bike there. Um, sometimes you can see events that occur as well. Uh, it's difficult to see. Here, because this is 30 days of data, and I don't have a zoom capability, but sometimes when there's an event and a bunch of people are taking bike points, uh, you can spot that there. Um, available docs, as you would expect, is exactly the inverse of available bikes, um, except for those <coughs> instances where they've added you know, uh, uh, capacity to a uh, station. You said your friend wanted to know about when to go outside to the grab bike. Correct. Kind of like a bus track when the bus can be Exactly. In, so you should be at this time. So has he, has he or she started using them? Uh, no, because um, he liked biking enough that he just went out the bike. But one, one 
so I have a bunch. I have a pretty long to do list for this. I need to change the name. I need to work on the performance. Um, um, obviously, uh, I'm excited about. Well, I know you're probably going to talk about this later, but I, mean, I know you announced the third one. usage data. Incorporating that um, could be really interesting. Um, I'd like to have a graph similar to these with the usage data and include um, some external data sources. Like, it'd be interesting to see how the weather affects the use, for instance. And what, uh, what code or what libraries are you using to come with it? Um, this, uh, the, the back end is all written in Clojure. Um, and I'm, I'm using Flot. It looks very Flottish, <laughs> which is a JavaScript charting library to do all the front end. Um, I would love help with the UI parts of this. And if you're interested in helping, um, but you don't know Clojure, which most people don't, um, I would love to work with you to get you up and running. You don't need to learn Clojure to work on the front end of it. The two um, paths are fairly modular. Um, so come talk to me if you want to work on that. Um, and I've tried to lay out the project so it's very easy for somebody to just get it up and running without a whole lot of work. All you need to do is install Postgres and another uh, couple scripts, and you should be able to run this locally. Thank you. Um,